Do you believe in psychics? Psychics have often been regarded as frauds and people that take cues from their clients, but there has been some cases where the psychics have helped people solve murders, find missing people, and new information that their client didn't disclose. Let's get in. Hi, my name is Noah. I am a spooky spiritualist, and on my channel, we talk about death, spiritual reparations, haunted people, places, and things, true crime, and how you can fuck around and find out. If you are not subscribed to my channel or follow me on whatever platform you are watching this on, I suggest you do so now. On today's episode, we will be talking about that weird intersection that true crime and psychic phenomena meet. You'd be surprised at how many of the biggest mysteries and murder cases psychics have solved. Case number one, Andre Daigle. On June 9th, 1987, Andre Daigle met up with some friends to go shoot some pool and to drink. He was never seen alive again, and the police did not suspect any foul play. But his sister did. Her name was Elise McGinley. And Elise basically was like, I don't think so. Something's happened to my brother and I'm going to figure it out. So then she enlisted the help of a local psychic named Rosemary Kerr. Kerr did a reading and determined that Andre Daigo absolutely was dead. And he was in the most unlikely spot that police had not looked. His remains were in a New Orleans swamp. Police went and checked that spot that she had said he was in and he was absolutely there. She was the first psychic ever to testify in a murder trial. Case number two, Amy Hoffman. Amy Hoffman was an 18-year-old woman who worked part-time at a local shopping mall. She vanished into thin air after getting off of work at a Morristown, New Jersey shopping center shopping mall. Her car was found the next day and the driver door was open, which led police to think that something had went down. It was definitely suspicious. The police turned to a local psychic named Nancy Weber that they had worked with before. Nancy did a reading and seen the agony that Amy Hoffman went through before her death and also seen the location of her body. Nancy Weber led this investigation and her readings ultimately led her to a man named James Kodachak who unfortunately had already murdered someone. Amy was not his first victim, but she was able to put him behind bars and, and make sure he could never do this again. Case number three, Elizabeth Cornish. In 1987, Elizabeth Cornish was a 42-year-old nurse and a mother of five. She was found beaten to death, and the only suspect that they had was her boyfriend. But Elizabeth's family didn't really get the notion that he was the actual murderer. They didn't believe that. They wanted to dig a little deeper. So Elizabeth's sister reached out to Nancy Weber, the psychic from the other story, to get a little bit more details on her sister's death. Nancy Weber did a reading and determined that Elizabeth's killer lived right upstairs from her and that they needed to investigate this man that lived above her. Now, the man in question, John Reese, had an alibi for the time of Elizabeth's murder, but Nancy was insistent that the medical examiner had gotten her time of death wrong. So the medical examiner re-examined Elizabeth's body and realized, wait, this psychic is right. She died four hours earlier, which rendered John Reese's alibi useless. He had no alibi for the previous four hours. He ultimately confessed and was arrested and sentenced to life without parole. Case number five, Debbie Keys. Debbie Keys had been alienated away from her children by her children's father who abducted them going against the mandatory requirements of their custody agreement. She was away from her kids for 13 months, 13 long months. 
she said to the sergeant that was working her case, I think I need to enlist a psychic. The sergeant working her case was a little hesitant, but he saw that Debbie was desperate to get her kids back. But thank goodness that he had an open mind and entertained the thought of hiring a psychic to see if the psychic could find the children. This hiring of this psychic was so on point, it led them on a three-state chase with the kid's father and the children, ultimately reuniting them with their mother. So the psychic was right the whole time. Case number six, the murders of Dora and Jake Conan. Dora and Jake Conan were two senior citizens living their best life until they were shot and killed in their upstate New York house on May 15, 1986. Now, initially, they had three suspects, the couple's grandson and two accomplices. But one problem seemed to debunk this theory. All of them had alibis. That is until they enlisted the help of psychic Noreen Renner. Now, not only did they hire Miss Renner, they also hired a hypnotist and they let the hypnotist and Noreen lead this investigation. Now, the crazy part of this is that the police did not tell the hypnotist nor Miss Renner what was going on, what the case was, but they both did readings and determined that the couple knew their killer. They knew these people. So then the police decided to put a lineup in front of them of the grandson and the two accomplices they suspected along with other people that were innocent or didn't have anything to do with the crime. And the hypnotist and Miss Renner picked out the couple's grandson and the two suspects. They solved the case. It was done. They also debunked it, this alibi that they all had. All of it was baloney. And they're currently serving two life sentences, each of them. Case number seven, John DeMars. Now, this one kind of pulled at my heartstrings, you guys. He wasn't necessarily murdered, but he went missing. And his family was desperate to find him. On December 20th, 1974, John DeMars, who was a successful New York City banker, boarded his train like he did every day to travel back to Nutley, New Jersey. However, whenever this train had got to John's destination, he was nowhere to be found. The case was so mysterious. The police said it was suspicious, but it wasn't suspicious. So they enlisted the help of a psychic named Dorothy Allison. Dorothy Allison did a reading and she said she's seen a vision of John falling off the train. She also seen a bone arrow in the numbers 222. Two, two. But at the time, Dorothy Allison could not give them any more information. It was like she was stumped. She didn't know where she was whenever she was in these visions. So the case went cold for a couple of months. And when I say a couple, I mean literally two months. On February 22nd, two, 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 John DeMar's body was found by a son and father who were practicing archery. And their arrows just happened to land right next to John's body. Police concluded that John had dozed off and the conductor had made a unannounced stop uh, across the Passaic River. And John, half asleep, thought that this was his stop. So he stumbled off of the, the train and fell into the water and drowned. It was an unfortunate conclusion, but at least his family could get some type of closure. Case number eight, the disappearance of Susan Jacobson. On May 15, 1976, 14-year-old Susan Jacobson vanished after leaving her Staten Island home to go attend to her job as an ice cream maker at an ice cream parlor. Law enforcement assumed that she just vanished or she ran away or whatever the case may be. They were not taking her parents seriously and were not looking for her. So they enlisted the help of Dorothy Allison, the psychic from the last story. Dorothy seen a horrific vision of Susan's boyfriend strangling her, literally strangling her, trying to unalive her. Dorothy Allison tried to get the police to reopen Susan's case. She seen and smelled and heard a lot during her reading, like the smell of fuel. She saw an abandoned car and the words M-A-R written on like a drum or something 
She just knew that Susan had been hurt. The police refused to reinvestigate. Luckily, Susan's father said, Dorothy Allison, that sounds very familiar. You know, the drum with the, the letters M-A-R written on it. I know that place. So he led police and Dorothy Allison to a abandoned World War I shipyard. This was two years after her disappearance, y'all. The police was super raggedy back then. There's no way that a minor could go missing and you not look for her because she simply ran away. It is crazy how law enforcement has evolved over the years because whenever Susan's dad and Dorothy Allison went to this abandoned shipyard, they seen two oil drums with the words M-A-R written on them. And lo and behold, Susan's body were in both drums. Her boyfriend, who was from the UK at the time, was arrested. Case number nine, Ashley Howley. Ashley Howley went missing from Columbus, Ohio in 2004. However, she literally was reaching out to different mediums to try to tell her story so they could solve her case. The spirit of Ashley Howley eventually made it over to Christy Robinette, who was a psychic medium out of Michigan. And eventually she started to communicate with Ashley and Ashley explained to Christy that she just needed time to sort her spirit out and literally accept what had happened to her. But she did tell Christy her boyfriend murdered her and also showed her the location of her body. So Christy then reported this to Columbus, Ohio police. And lo and behold, where the spirit had told Christy her body was, it indeed was there. Ashley went missing in 2004. Her remains weren't found until 2008. And her boyfriend, he went straight to jail. Case number 10, Julie Popovich. In August of 2005, a young woman, a spirit, visited Christy Robinette, the same psychic from the other story. And she drew a map and pushed past all the other spirits to get in contact with Christy. And the map that she revealed to Christy is exactly where they found her body. These spirits are real and they don't want to be left unfound. The story of Julie Popovich and Christy Robinette just proves that if spirit is persistent, oh, she going to push through everybody else because she was at the back of the line. Christy said she literally shoved her way to the front just to speak with her so she could be discovered. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn your notification bell on if you are watching this on YouTube, if you're watching on TikTok or any other platform. Don't forget to follow me. If you have a suggestion of what you would like me to cover, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Y'all do good and be good. And until next time.